Hello everyone, my name is Manuel and I'm talking from Brazil. It's a big pleasure to me to speak at the Scrum Day Ecuador. I hope you enjoy the message that I have to you today. And today we're going to talk about Learn 3.0. Then let's start by the beginning. All right. Um, probably the most important thing about Learn 3.0 is to understand the motivation behind the concept. The motivation behind the Learn 3.0 is if you look, for example, at uh, a traditional classroom, probably you will recognize a kind of pattern. Which pattern I talk about? Probably you'll see uh, a kind of pyramid. Mm, it's, a, it's a strong pyramid, to be honest. But uh, why it's important? It's important because this pyramid is very similar as uh, a traditional pyramid present at the organization, for example. Uh, in this case, we have uh, the famous separation between the thinkers and the doers. The thinkers, most of the time, take a kind of centralizing decision about what and how do something. And the doers just do it, right? Um, in, in our organization, for example, we have the managers made the centralized decisions, and the doers just follow this structure. It's a very simple model, to be honest. Uh, but uh, the similar situation, the similar behavior we have at the educational model. We have the teacher and we have the students. The teachers take the centralized decisions about what and how to learn something, right? And the students just receive the, the structure, the, 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 the knowledge, basically. Um, in this case, the teacher is a kind of expert. Actually, he is the responsible to teach the student. To be honest, most of the time, he is the only responsible to do that, right? Uh, but the real problem of this model is the prescriptive behavior. Uh, the teacher, most of the time, uh, work on the prescriptive, prescriptive answers, and the students just repeat these answers. Look that this model is based on repetition, right? Repetition, repetition, repetition. Similar effector, similar, for example, uh, if you are building car most of the time, right? But of course, we need to rethink about this model. We can call it as learning 1.0. In the learning 1.0, we are a kind of knowledge receiver. In this case, as knowledge receivers, we depend on some experts or some institution to decide about what and how I need to learn something. Note that in this model, we have uh, relationships based on a kind of one-to-many model. Why one-to-many? Because we have one teacher designed to many students, right? In this case, the teacher, for example, decides about what and how the student must learn something, for example. All right, um, the, in the learning 1.0, basically we have a teacher acting as an expert. The expert provides, for example, this image, uh, the expert is, is transferring their knowledge to the, the, the student, right? Uh, it's important because if you, for example, we summarize the learning 1.0 model, you can define that the expert the final question in the answer. Just it. It's a, it's a good summary for the learning 1.0 model, right? Okay. Uh, but you also have uh, a, a kind of uh, transitional model. This model is called as learning 2.0. In the learning 2.0, basically, you have a uh, a better interaction between the specialist, between the expert, for example, 
and the student, right? Uh, then you can understand that you already have some element of the emergent learning, okay? But the major part of the learning 2.0 is the same model that the learning 1.0. For example, in the learning 2.0, we still having the one-to-many model, right? For example, we still have the teacher decide about what the learner must learn. Okay, but of course, there is more interaction in this, in this scenario. For example, we can summarize that the learning can define the question, but the expert still defines the answer. Then it summarizes what the learning 2.0 is. All right, but why do we need to rethink about these models? Basically, you need to rethink about it because for every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. Or in other words, basically, you must recognize the complex system. And uh, what's this type of discussion is important for by a learning perspective? It's important because uh, the learning 1.0, for example, is strongly based on the obvious system. And uh, some obvious system is based on prescription and repetition model, right? Of course, this, uh, this system is important for uh, several types of case. But uh, if you recognize that we are living in a different age, uh, age of the knowledge workers, for example, then you, you, you recognize that, but at the time, we are in the complex system. And at the complex system, uh, a, a complex system is based on uncertainty and singularity. Then, uh, it's basically, it's impossible to prescriptive, to prescriptive prescriptive some solution uh, for some problem, for example, right? Then that's the main idea behind the learning 3.0, right? The learn 3.0, uh, we don't, don't have anymore the power of the institution or the expert. The, the, the learning is no longer determined by the expert. Actually, the learning emerged from the people emerge from the real world also, right? And of course, the learning 3.0 um, provoke a uh, great uh, kind of environment to include all perspective during the learning process, right? You can understand, for example, that the learning 3.0 recognizes that we need to work in an end-to-end model or in a man-to-man -man relationship. In this case, for example, uh, the man-to-man -man model recognizes that uh, everyone can learn from everyone, right? That's the gist of the learning 3.0, right? The main idea is that everyone can learn from everyone, right? Okay, um, then we can summarize that in the learning 1.0, we have the expert who does define the question and the answer. And in the learn 2.0, we still have the expert, but there is more interaction between the expert and the student. But the final answer still depends on the expert, right? And in the learn 3.0, the learners define both questions and the answer, right? That's the main idea, the main difference among this model, basically. But before we keep forward, I have a mission for you, right? I would like to ask to you to self-organize in pair and discuss what you think about this concept. Are you agree with this concept? In your recent experience, 
what's the difference between the 1.0 the and the 3.0, for example? Okay, please, you have five minutes, discuss about it, and later on, we keep going in this lecture. Bye. Uh, it's important to note that uh, it is about the difference between the prescriptive approach and the emergent approach, especially because uh, you start to recognize that uh, the learning arises from the interaction between a number of people, right? Uh, in this case, for example, uh, the result of the learning is unpredictable. Right? It's a very important stuff to remember, right? Remember the uncertainty, right? It's very related with a complex system. Learning 3.0 also is based on a uh, lot of dialogue, uh, multiple perspectives, and the learning 3.0 recognize that everyone is equal during the learning process. It's, in, it's important because uh, if you take a look at uh, the complex theory, you uh, understand that in the complex system, every single element is the cause and the effect at the same time. And, of course, by a learning perspective, the learning 3.0 recognizes that every single participant is the creator and the receiver at the same time, right? And you can understand that in the learning on 1.0, the expert is the responsible of the teaching, of the, of the teaching process, and the learning 3.0, everyone are responsible of the learning process. So notice that in this case, you change the perspective, right, in the 1.0, the, the main perspective is by the teacher, right? The learning 3.0, we change the point of view. We start to work as a learner, at the point of view as a learner. It, 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 it's very important to understand how we learn, how my brain learns, basically, right? That's the, the, the main point of the learning 3.0. Look at that, uh, it's about autonomy. Learning to control, fostering the, the autonomy during the learning process. Uh, if you remember, for example, the famous uh, words from uh, Dan Pink, uh, autonomy is one of the powerful intrinsic motivators mm -hmm. from the knowledge workers, for example. All right, uh, but by this moment, you are thinking, uh, hey Manuel, I really love this theory, but how can I put it in practice? All right, I will help you, okay? I will explain to you a little bit about the Learn 2.0 system, okay? But it's very important to understand that this system work, works as a kind of bricks. Actually, there is a compound by a lot of bricks, right? But why bricks? Why is it so important for me? Probably you are thinking. Uh, because as a Lego, for example, you can build what you, what, what you want, how you want, and when you want, right? There is no prescription about how you can put in practice the learning to think, oh, but at the time, you just have a couple of principles, a couple of ideas, right, to help you to, uh, to start the, the Learn 3.0 experience, right? Then, let's take a look of the Learn 3.0 system. That's the Learn 3.0 system. Note that the Learn 3.0 system is based on theory, principles, and flow. I will explain these uh, items a little bit uh, later on. And, of course, we also have some ideas, that, that ideas uh, based on some tools, on some techniques to help us during the Learning 3.0 experience, right? 
Okay, let's start by the theory. You can find out more details about the Learn to Your concept at this book. This book was wrote by Alexandre Magnum. Alexandre Magnum was the creator and the founder of the Learn, the Learn to Your movement. I really recommend, I strongly recommend you to read this book because you can get more knowledge, more theory, more understandable about the Learn 3.0 uh, idea in general, right? But, uh, of course, to, to help us to understand what the Learn 3.0 is, we have a kind of set of principles. In this case, this principle is called the Learning Festival. Okay, it's very similar with the Agile Manifest, most of the time, right? But uh, with the Learning Fest, the Learning Fest can summarize what the Learning 3.0 is. Look, it's very important to understand this principle uh, because, as I mentioned before, there is no uh, methodology to put the Learning 3.0 in practice, right? Because, why there is no uh, methodology? Because methodology in general is, is from the prescriptive world, the 1.0 world, for example. In the Learn 3.0, recognize that there is no rules, there is no uh, prescription, right? They, of course, will have just a couple of principles to help us in a kind of high idea, right? Uh, how we can put the, the principle, how we, how we can put the concept in practice, right? Okay, uh, I, you, can, you can read these uh, principles uh, in more detail later on, right? But I will show briefly for you uh, this concept, these principles, uh, but if you access the learn to website, we will find these principles in more detail. Right? Let's start by the first one. It's very important that you learn on the real world. Okay? The second one, deep in the learning on what is in front of you. Follow. Be the protagonist of your learning. Share is the best way to learn. Optimize your learning at network. Ideas are so important as experience. To visualize the learning is better than measure you. Learn in harmony with your brain. And to complete this principle, we have a kind of flow. It's very important to note that this flow don't represent a kind of methodology, right? It just describe the main behaviors necessary to put in practice the uh, learn through all concept in general. All right, why it's important? Because uh, using the learn through all flow, you understand that most of the time you need to start by some problematizing, right? Because it's very important to understand where you want to, to reach, right? What is your real problem, for example? And uh, it helps us to understand that uh, in the Learn 3.0 experience or in a Learn 3.0 event in general, uh, you need to connect different points of view, right? You need to research more points of view, especially different points of view, of course. And you need to create some safe environment to put in practice this knowledge. And of course, the sharing is the food to put in practice this concept, this, this flow itself, right? And all of this, all these stuff will be supported by a strong piece of sense making, right? It's very important to real, to, to deeply understand what this stuff real means, right? That's the reason because the learning real flow is so important to the learn through system in general, okay? All right, but um, to put in practice 
the, the principle and the flow, for example, we we'll have some, so we we'll have a few tools actually. Most of these tools are acting as a kind of dog fooding. What it means by dog fooding? Just, uh, just the starting tools to helping the initial experimentation using Learning 3.0. But you, you can, using other different tools, and other different tools, you can create your own tools, for example, to put in practice the flow and to put in practice the principle, right? Then let's understand a little bit about the Learning Canvas. The Learning Canvas is the most famous tool of the Learning 3.0 world. Uh, basically, this canvas put in practice the learning through all flow because we will start by a team, right? A team describes the problem, the big problem that we want to solve. Okay. After that, uh, we have some descriptions about the, the problem or the symptoms of this team, right? And will have different point of views about histories and about ideas. And also, to, to help us to understand the problem solving, we need to understand the expected result, right? It's a kind of future state of the situation, okay? Uh, after that, we need to choice, to choose, um, some actions to experiment, to put, in practice, to put in practice some experimentation around this idea, or around these stories, for example. Of course, this canvas has a basic structure, but uh, beyond these structures, it's very important to understand the roles. So in this case, we have three roles, right? The asker, the facilitator, and the sharer. The asker is the owner of the team. It means that the asker is a person who has some problem and, they, and he wants to solve this problem, right? Then uh, he will get some experience or some ideas from the shared. The shared uh, is the people who has some stories, some histories, or some ideas, especially different ideas, to help the asker to get the goal. Right? And to organize in this entire process, we have the facilitator. The facilitator is the person who put in practice the learning through all flow, the, the people to help the asker, to help the sharer, to organize the all knowledge, the all information, the all product of the, the learner, right? Then that's are the main roles uh, using the learning, the learning trio canvas. Okay. Uh, other important uh, element of the this learning system is the learn shot. The learn shot is a short-term event to help us to put in practice the learning trio concept. Uh, why? It's important to understand uh, small stuff. Why learn shop? Look, uh, if you, for example, uh, like to take a beer, right? Probably you are familiar with a pint, right? A pint, in this case, represents, for example, a long-term event to get some knowledge, right? But probably you will spend um, well, a, a lot of time you consume this, this pint, right? But if you want a deep impact uh, in a short term, probably, you, you, went, you go to the bar and you ask for a shot. A shot, for example, a shot of tequila, right? And probably the, this shot will create a more stronger, a stronger effect in a short term period of time. Right? That's the reason because Alexander named this event as a learn shot. It's an event to create a real and deep uh, learning 
with a deep impact for the participants in general, right? Then let's understand what a learn shop is. Basically, a learn shop is, a, as I told you, a short-term event to gathering different parts, participants with different point of view, different stories, different ideas around the same things, for example. Probably we'll put in practice some tool, for example, learning Canvas, but we can combine the other, other uh, tools to help in, to facilitate this process, for example. Uh, for example, it's very common to use Visual Thinking, to use uh, the Word Cafe, to use, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Fishbowl, for example. Uh, as a part, as part of the the learn, the learn shop. Uh, well, Learning shop was awesome. This is the learning canvas we generated, and I had the opportunity to organize all my thoughts on this topic, and also to have the contribution of other people, so we can sum this up. And I come back home with some tries that I'll do this week. And it was it was really really great. I'm so satisfied with it. here expecting to learn about Agile and I'm going home learning about Agile and about learning as well, about facilitation. I think the in-depth talks uh, along with the, the facilitation was a perfect combination, quick and objective, very good. So I came here today and I didn't know what to expect uh, and then I started talking to people and then it all happened like magic and sometimes it's not like a single person owns all the experience and all the knowledge but the knowledge is divided up among us all and this whole experience made me believe that I'm taking back more knowledge than I would have at a conference or something traditional. So it, it, it was great. And I believe that I'm learning how to learn again. time the learning shot is organized and facilitated by a licensed facilitator right it's very important because uh, the learning tool ecosystem is very based on the facilitators community I will explain it right now uh, the facilitator community is the gist of the learn tool system in general. It's a kind of uh, keystone, to be honest, because uh, the facilitators, most of the time, will help different people in different places, in different companies, to put in practice the learning tool concept, right? Then, it's very important to understand what the facilitation is in this situation, right? Uh, I like very much this concept. This concept explains for us uh, what the facilitation is. Facilitation is any active that makes tasks for others easy. It's a simple concept, right? But it tells a lot of the facilitation in general, right? Uh, why facilitation is so important in this, in this situation? If you look, for example, the people, uh, most of the time the people has goals, right? People want to reach some goals, but 
the people see the path towards the goal with a lot of obstacles, right? The facilitator uh, will help the people to understand these obstacles, and especially when, for example, we have the goal, have the people want to connect with other people, the facilitator will create some shortcut to reduce this obstacle, to promote this, the connection between these the, this people, right? Uh, most of the time, you can summarize that the facilitation is about to help people have hard conversation. Or, in other words, facilitation is about to help people to have good conversation about hard subjects, right? It's a very powerful concept uh, behind facilitation in general, right? And by a learning through your perspective, you need to, to you need to have a, a good facilitator, facilitator with uh, excellent facilitation skills because uh, the hard conversation in this case, the hard subject is the learning itself, right? Most of the time, the complex learning for complex environment or critical environment also, right? Then you really need a good facilitator to work in, in to, to, to help in the, 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 the situation, to promote the, the learning to all experience in general. Okay? Then, uh, other powerful concept around facilitation is this concept. This concept uh, is from the book Collaboration Explained. And basically, this concept, th th this phrase uh, means that a facilitator owns the process, not the decisions. It's very important and it's very related with the learning trail concept in general. Do you remember the, the concept about the product and the process of the learning? So, in this case, by a learning through all perspective, the facilitator probably is controlling, are controlling the the process, for example, the facilitator are applying the learning canvas or organizing the time box during a uh, some learning shop, for example. But the facilitator have not control about the the result of the, the process, the product in this case, right? For this reason, it's very important to understand the most of the time the facilitator are except from the team, you know, the facilitator most of the time there is no engagement or involvement with the, the same problems that they, they help to solve uh, for those people, for example. Okay, uh, in other words, you can summarize that as a facilitator, you don't create the art itself, right? You don't need to get knowledge about how to create the art. Okay, but you really are, the only stuff that you really need to put in practice is as facilitator, you need to create the conditions when the, the art will happen, right? Whoa, that's all, folks. It was the basic structure of the learn system of the learning tree. Oh, I hope that you enjoyed this material, this structure. Uh, if you want for more information about Learn 3.0, please access the learn3.0.co website and keep in touch with the Learn 3.0 community, right? But before I go, I would ask to you one more mission, right? Please self-organize again in pair and discuss what was your main lesson, your, your main uh, insight from today, okay? Please, sharing among yourself, and put in practice this mantra. Sharing is the new teaching, or better, sharing is the new learning, okay? Thanks so much, I hope that you're enjoying. See you next conference, and have a nice day, bye.